What's up guys, welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ardell and in today's video we cover the Black Mustang Defense, an extremely dangerous and aggressive counter to the King's Indian Attack, which can help you get some really fun games. And this is also considered to be a transitional opening, meaning that it can transpose into a lot of different kinds of opening systems. So I'll include a few of those just so you're prepared for what you might see at the end of this video. Now really this is a response against the move Knight F3 with the ready opening. And by playing this, white is keeping options open, such as E4, D4, and C4, but white probably isn't too dependent on playing any of these moves. What do I mean by this? Well, right now, if we play a move like Knight F6 or D5, both extremely popular responses for black, E4 is simply not a possibility. Here, if we play a move like C5 with the Sicilian Invitation, it does allow E4, but D4, we just take that pawn right off the board, getting a flank pawn for a center pawn. We continue to develop our pieces, and black has a very solid game there. But the one thing about Knight F3 is that usually this move is used to start off the King's Indian attack, on in which white is going to use this G pawn to play G3, Bishop G2, moves like D3, castling kingside, and trying to get some kind of kingside attack and momentum. Usually, though, we see this move Knight f3 instead of g3 at first because white wants to stop this e5 possibility but what if i told you we're going to try to play this on the second move here we're going to play knight c6 with the black mustang variation kind of a strange looking move at first but i do think that it's a lot stronger than most people think let's say white just keeps going with their king's indian attack with g3 well now we're able to play e5 at move two. And guys, I actually looked on the Lee Chess database and the most popular move here for white was surprisingly bishop g2. And I must admit, most of the time when playing the king's Indian attack, white doesn't really have to think much about the first six moves, right? I mean, g3, knight f3, bishop d2, continue with moves like d3, castling kingside, etc. But guys, against the black mustang defense, this doesn't work. You can't just pre-move to bishop g2 and you can't just play bishop g2 thinking everything's gonna be okay because right now we have e4 attacking the knight. And notice all of the squares that the knight currently cannot go to. This knight on c6 takes away both of the sweet center squares and the queen on d8 attacks g5. Knight h4 could be played, but then we just play this move d5 and then knight isn't doing much. In fact, if anything, it's a big, big target for black. So the best move here for white is knight g1, but yet again, we're going to continue with d5. And if white tries to undermine our center with a move like d3, there's a lot of options here. I've seen players go with f5, knight f6. I personally like this move bishop f5, just defending the pawn on e4. Whole idea being, I mean, if a move like knight d2, we just continue to develop with knight f6. If something like knight c3, okay, we play bishop b4, pinning the knight. And here, if a move like d takes e4, we're simply able to capture back. And again, guys, if white wants to keep developing, we're completely okay with that. We're just going to keep developing as well. We're totally okay with this tension because we're always going to have queen takes d1 ideas available, which makes this king not castled. And on top of that, if white takes us right now, we can take back with the rook. And obviously here, guys, we have a big advantage in development. No King's Indian attack type player is wanting this kind of position. In fact, right now, we're threatening ideas like knight d4 and knight b4. For example, if white just plays a quiet move like knight c3, we throw this knight into d4, and we're now attacking this pawn on c2, and white actually can't even defend it. I mean, if a move like king d1, okay, we play knight b3 with check against this king. If bishop d2, we just take that bishop, and if a move like king e1, Okay, we take the rook, and yet again, we're attacking this non-defendable pawn on c2. This game is nearly over. So y'all, white really needs to be mindful of these knight d4, knight b4 ideas. One option is e3, whole idea being knight b4 can run into knight a3, defending the pawn on c2, but even then, black has a very comfortable and nice game. And here, if a move like c3, stopping both of these ideas, that's okay. We can now continue with a move like h6. And notice here, on top of our easy development, how difficult it is for white to develop right now. For example, if this bishop goes to a square like f4, we can even play g5. I mean, we don't have to play this move, but it is kind of fun. Whole idea being that this bishop has to run away, because if it takes the pawn, we now play rook d7, and this bishop, as of now, is trapped. There's only one way for this bishop to get out, and that's by the desperation play g4, attacking our bishop on f5. Whole idea being once we take that pawn, white gets just enough space to escape with bishop g3, but now we just continue with f5, f4 ideas in the air. We have a huge center, a ton of active pieces, easy development on the way, and we're just playing chess.
So all that to say, guys, if white tries to go and do a king's Indian attack type system with g3 and you play this move e5, they cannot play bishop g2 because of e4 and black is going to have a big, big edge. So here white seems to usually go with the move of d3. But against this, we now play d5, having full control of the center at move three, which most king's Indian attack type players are definitely not familiar with here against a move like bishop g2. There's a ton of different ways we can play. I mean, we could even just naturally develop our pieces not of six. Bishop d6, castling kingside, or my personal favorite, the aggressive approach of f6, followed by bishop e6, putting our queen on d7. And obviously, guys, this is a very aggressive setup. Knight g5 cannot be played because of our pawn on f6. We have a strong center here. And really, this is a reverse 150 attack against the perk defense. If white ever breaks through with a normal looking move like e4, that's fine. We play d4. And the very next move, we start to throw our pawns down the board g5. And you have a very fun and exciting game of chess ahead of you with winning chances. So y'all going back to this position against the Moon Knight F3, us going with the Black Mustang defense. Really, if white tries to play a King's Indian attack, we're going to play E5 and we're going to get an aggressive game. And if white doesn't want that, they're simply not able to play their King's Indian attack type setup. But what happens if white sees this move and doesn't go? for g3 really by playing this move knight c6 unlike moves like d5 or c5 white still has a bunch of these options available i'd say one of the bigger issues of the black mustang defense is this move e4 and it's really an issue only if you are not an e5 player because right now i do suggest this move e5 and all of a sudden you do have a knight f3 player seeming as if they're playing an e4 opening i mean if you were playing this in a tournament match with the black pieces and i walk by the board i would not think that knight f3 and knight c6 were the first moves. So really it just depends if you're an e5 player or not. Even if you're not, this is still a very playable game. White does have a lot of openings here, but there's a good chance that white is not too comfortable for these positions. And if you're an e5 player, there's an even greater chance that you're gonna be much more comfortable and that's exactly what you want. What if white instead goes for a move like c4? Well, now I'm gonna be recommending this move e5 yet again. And all of a sudden you have a knight f3 player in the English opening. I mean, here, if I move like knight c3, we're just gonna continue to naturally develop our pieces. We play knight f6, and as you guys can see, we have the four knights variation of the English opening against a move like e3. We continue with bishop b4. We're just gonna continue to naturally develop your pieces, and it can be argued that black has achieved equality. So y'all, we covered both the moves e4 and c4, in which case I'm gonna be recommending e5, transposing into either e4 and e5, or the English opening for Knight's variation potentially. What about the move D4 from white? What do we do here? Well, now we're gonna play this move D5, transposing into the Chagorin variation. And the big move you gotta be a little bit concerned about is C4, putting some immediate pressure on D5, transposing into the full Chagorin defense. But let's first cover what happens if white just plays a natural move like Bishop F4, just developing a piece. Well, we as well are just gonna continue to develop our pieces. We can play a move like Bishop F5, continue with E6, six obviously here if bishop d3 we can always just take that bishop right off the board and then continue with bishop d6 ourselves if a move like bishop b5 we can continue with bishop d6 anyways we're not too worried about that bishop taking on c6 and here if a move like c4 we actually have knight b4 ideas in the air because of our bishop on f5 key note guys you do not have to put this bishop on f5 bishop on g4 is also a good option and here if a move like knight a6 we can now continue with c6 here forming a pawn pyramid we have a solid game here d takes c4 can be played once this bishop wastes a move followed by knight d5 whenever we want attacking this bishop and we're just playing chess the computer gives black the edge here but what happens if instead of white playing a quiet move like bishop f4 or e3 white goes for c4 transposing into the queen's gambit declined chagorin defense well here i'm recommending the option of bishop g4 guys my number one rule for Chagorin players is to continue to play aggressively. Here, white really does have two main options. One of them is playing this move knight c3, trying to put a ton of pressure on this d5 pawn. And another option is just taking the pawn right away and hoping that we're gonna take back with the queen. Guys, do not take back with the queen right here because white simply has knight c3 kicking our queen around followed by a move like d5. And we are in big, big trouble. Even if we play a move like castling queenside, pinning the pawn on d5 to the queen, White can now just continue with a move like bishop d2, eyeing both our queen and our knight, and here if a knight runs away 
to a square like knight b8. There's also knight e5 ideas in the air. This is just not looking very good for black. So guys, when you see this move, do not take immediately with the queen. Instead, do the intermediate move of bishop takes f3. Now notice if pawn takes knight, we're simply going to take that pawn and we have a playable game. But the big reason we take here first is that after the pawn takes back, we play queen takes d5. And notice now that knight c3 just cannot be played because we played that intermediate move and the defender of d4 is gone. So right now, if knight c3, okay, thank you for the pawn on d4. And the second that white defends this, we're wasting no time in advancing in the center of the board, prepared to meet knight c3 with bishop b4. We have an active game here, a fun game here, and we have a good game of chess ahead of us. So y'all, that covers what to do against c takes d5. Don't take back with the queen immediately, but throw in this move and then take so that that pawn on d4 is going to be hanging. What about the move knight c3? White just ganging up on this pawn. Well, here we don't need to do anything crazy. In fact, we can just play a move like e6 and just naturally develop our pieces. I mean, if a move here like e3, we can always play knight f6. If a move like h3, just drop the bishop back to h5. And if white ever takes on d5, just take back with a pawn and we have a solid game here. If you'd like to learn the theory behind the Jagoran defense as a whole, click that video to the left. If you'd like to learn how to play the dunst opening, which is knight c3 from white, click that video on the right. Leave a comment below to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.